Hello, everybody, and welcome to this uh, special teaching uh, video that we're running uh, today. And uh, this is part of a series of teaching videos that we have on our YouTube channel, so you can get more information about other topics and things that we've covered on our Tenant Farmers uh, YouTube channel. And also, you'll find there a host of other video material, including videos of our webinars. But these teaching videos are really just to highlight key points of interest on topical matters uh, that tenant farmers and others might be uh, interested in. And today, we're going to be looking at a really big uh, topic, so we won't be able to do it justice today in its entirety, but we're looking at top tips for applying for a tenancy. And this is something that we get asked about on a very regular basis and if you are a member of the of the tfa you can actually access a a much longer piece uh, that our specialist today has done caroline squire who's one of our specialist rural surveyors um so there's a members only exclusive uh, uh, which is uh, looking at this in a much more uh, in a much wider context you can get that on our youtube channel if you're a member uh, of, of the tfa um, but today we're going to be looking at it just in a, in a few uh, for a few brief moments. We're really grateful to Oxbury Bank, who are sponsoring the series of teachings and our webinar program for 2023. Oxbury was formed in 2021 by a group of bankers, farmers, and technologists, uh, and they are the UK's only bank which is 100% dedicated to serving farmers, food production and the rural economy. So we're really delighted to have Oxbury on board. So we're recording this at the beginning of 2023. So anything we say is, is relevant only at that point. If you want uh, some further detail, if you're watching this later, then do make sure you make contact with the, with the TFA to, to get more information. So as I say, this is about top tips for applying for a tenancy. And I'm gonna throw you now to Caroline Squire, who's gonna take us through that topic for us today. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you very much, George. Um, so firstly, when it comes to finding an opportunity, the more proactive you can be, the better. So it's important to register your interest with local councils, private estates and land agents in order that you're on their mailing list. So should an opportunity arise, the details will be sent straight out to you. And do also keep an eye on local and national press, as well as the TFA's list of tenancy opportunities, which you can find on the members area of the TFA website. Um, and it goes without saying, the wider the geographical area you're willing to consider, the better your chance will be of finding an opportunity. So do keep that in mind as well. And once you've found an opportunity, um, it's important to book yourself into the viewing day of that farm. Have a good look around the farm and be realistic about the farm's physical limitations and therefore what farming system will work on the farm. Um, also have a think about what works will need completing for your proposed system to work, be it repairs or improvements and the associated, the associated costs of those repairs and improvements. Um, also, most tenancies will be subject to an ingoing payment, for example, to take over the outgoing tenants fixtures. So do ensure that you find out what the ingoing payment will be and consider whether you can realistically afford that. Also have a look at the draft FBT, which the letting agent should be able to provide you with. Consider whether the terms of the tenancy allow you to do what you plan to do with the holding. So just as an example, if you plan to have a campsite diversification on the holding, um, but the FBT states that the holding must be used for agriculture only, this is something you need to be aware of and a point you'll need to negotiate on. Um, also consider the repairing obligations in the draft FBT and how those are split between the parties and the cost the tenant is going to have to bear. So just as an example, if it's an FRI lease, so fully repairing and insuring, so all of the repairs will therefore be the tenant's responsibility, think about the impact that will have on your cash flow and also the impact it will have on the rent you can afford to pay. Um, it's also really important to liaise with the letting agent to find out what the landlord's objectives are. So if the landlord was purely only interested in achieving the highest rent possible, I'd always suggest it's worth taking a step back and considering whether it's worth your time and effort in applying if all they're going to be looking at is the rental figure bid rather than the candidate and the plan. 
Um, however, if their objective was perhaps to let to someone who's going to farm in a certain way, it's important to use that information to help you build your business plan, because the more your business plan can tie up with the landlord's objectives, the better your chances are of being successful and being selected for the tenancy. Um, next slide, please. So when it comes to actually putting your tender application together, um, it's important that you set out your proposals, including your farming system and any diversifications, and also any management plans. So for example, manure and slurry management if the farm is situated within an MVZ. Your business plan is, is your chance to sell yourself and really show why you are the best candidate for the holding. I would always suggest including a CV in an appendix to highlight your relevant training and experience. Again, just to highlight why you would be the perfect candidate for the holding. If possible, as I've mentioned before, do try and steer your plan in line with the landlord's objectives, because the more your plan ties up with those objectives, the better your chances will be. So, for example, if the landlord wants the farm to be let as a progression unit, I would take the time to explain how the tenancy will allow you to grow and prog progress your current business. Or if the landlord, for example, wanted the farm to be farmed in an environmentally sensitive way, I would take the time to explain how you will be farming in that way. You must also include figures to substantiate your business plan. So you should include cash flow forecasts, profit and loss accounts and balance sheets, ideally up until the first break point in the term, if there is one. If there isn't, then I would suggest providing them for at least the first three years, unless it is otherwise specified by the letting agent. And your rental bid should be based on your figures and it should be an amount which is viable for you and your business. So ultimately, a well-advised and sensible landlord is going to be looking through your figures to ensure that your rent is deliverable, because from their point of view, the last thing they'll want is a tenant who finds they can't service their rent a year or two into the fixed term of the tenancy. And on that note, I, I would also urge you to remember that if you're a new entrant, you're in a completely different financial environment to people who may have bid on land two or three years ago um, because you won't be eligible for D-Link payments, which is quite a big factor. So your financial situation is completely different to those who are already in occupation. And that needs to be taken into account in, in your rental bid. So I would try to pay less attention to other rents people are paying and really focus on your figures and what you can afford. Um, so I would also have a think about who to include as your referees. I'd always suggest generally having one reference for farming, one reference for character and one reference for financial. And then that covers all bases. If borrowed funds form part of your business plan, do be prepared to provide evidence that those funds are available. So whether that be a letter from your bank manager confirming that an overdraft facility is in place and the amount of that overdraft. And I would include that in an appendix to your business plan. And finally, although it might be obvious, do ensure that all application forms are completed and all information requested is provided. You need to remember that the letting agent will probably have numerous applications to look through. So the easier you can make your application to navigate through and read through the better. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Caroline, for those uh, those high level points that we need to be thinking about in terms of uh, people that are looking to get into farming through, through a tenancy really helpful. And as we said at the beginning, you've done a much longer video which covers this in more detail, which is available as a members exclusive on our on our YouTube channel. So if people do want a deeper dive, they can go and have a look at your uh, much more detailed video on that on that front. But for now, I've got just got a couple of questions uh, that uh, that sometimes get thrown at us. So obviously, there's a lot of work involved in trying to put together a, an application, a tender for a, a farm, as as you've uh, set out. What's your thoughts about using a consultant to put together your business plan and your financial information? So getting a consultant can be a good idea, um, particularly if you're not 100% confident in providing the raw figures yourself and you need some help in getting figures which are realistic. But the thing to be wary of is that you still need to 100% own your plan and know where all of these figures have come from because 
if you are successful and get through to interview, for example, your consultant isn't going to be with you in the interview room to hold your hand and help explain where your figures have come from. So it's important that if you do use a consultant, you make sure they explain thoroughly to you why they've used certain figures and you're able to justify that um, if you were to get through to interview with the landlord. Oh, really, really good advice, Sir Kai. Thank you. And um, one other thing which often gets thrown at us with all of the market uncertainty, putting together a budget, even for a year ahead, let alone three years ahead, could be really difficult. Um, and given the degree of speculation that's required, is there any benefit in trying to produce a budget at all? Um, so I appreciate things are very volatile, especially at the moment, but um, your landlord will appreciate that your budget is purely a best guess at that moment in time. Um, so it's not necessarily going to be 100% accurate, but your budgets will reflect your approach and also give a really good indication of, of your business judgment and acumen. So it is an important consideration for the landlord to be able to look at. OK, Carol, well, I think we will leave it there. There's obviously a lot more that we could talk about on this subject. We could talk for a week on, on, on this particular topic. And as I said, you have got that longer video piece that people can go and, and view. But obviously, we have a specialist advice uh, available to those that are members of the TFA. And it's relatively inexpensive to join. It's only, at the moment, £249 per, per year to be a member. And for that, you get access to all of the information and advice from specialist advisors like Caroline. Uh, and also, you'll be able to access her uh, members exclusive um, longer video piece on 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 uh, uh, tendering for a farm, which which I would say would be essential viewing for anybody that is uh, considering that. So huge thanks, Caroline, uh, for taking us through that. Hope you have enjoyed this uh, brief session. As I said, it is part of a wider a suite of video materials available on our uh, YouTube channel, and you'll get access to our webinars on there as well. If you are watching this at the beginning of 2023, then look out for a couple of really good webinars that are coming up. So one in mid-February, where we're welcoming back Janet Hughes, who's the program director at DEFRA for the Future Farming and Countryside program. She's been a regular visitor to our webinars, but she'll be explaining some of the detail around the announcements that we've recently had on the Sustainable Farming Incentive and Countryside Stewardship Plus. And then in March, we will be looking specifically at what, uh, what scheme might be right for you in terms of the Countryside Stewardship Plus scheme and the Sustainable Farming Incentive. So watch out for those webinars and you can always catch up with them uh, on demand uh, after that. Thanks again to Oxbury for the very generous sponsorship of, of this. Hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you soon.